Team USA, the men's basketball team is on to the gold medal game, topping Australia 97 to 78 in Japan in the semis. It was a huge third quarter for the Americans, outscoring them 32 to 10. The Americans were down by as many as 15 in the first half, but they closed on a big run led by Kevin Aranda at 23, Devin Booker 20, as well as the Americans move on to the gold medal game. Let's bring in Matt Norlander who covers college basketball for HQ. He's covering the Olympics in and he is covering the U.S. men's basketball team as well. And hey, Matt, I want to point to I mentioned that 32 10 third quarter, but I want to point to the First half, the United States was down in this one of 41 to 26 with 525 to go in the half. They closed the half on a 16 to 4 run. How important was that run to get within three at the half with regards to the outcome of this game? It was the most important stretch of the game for Team USA to rally in that first half at the back end of the second quarter. Kevin Durant leading the way, mm -hmm. I thought, was pivotal. And it kind of represented the ongoing um, circumstances with this Team USA team. You know, yep. there's only two players on this roster who have Olympic experience, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. And if Durant wasn't on the roster, I don't necessarily believe that Team USA would have would have won this game. I, I think Durant was not single-handedly responsible for rallying yep. them in that uh, back end stretch of the second quarter. But if he wasn't available on this team, I'm not sure who would have been that guy, so to speak. Once he got them going, I mean, you mentioned that run there. It, it just ballooned into 48-14 over the long stretch, and eventually they were able to pull away. But yeah, the, the back end of the second quarter was humongous, and this is why uh, Greg Popovich, Steve Kerr, Jay Wright, that entire coaching staff has to be so grateful and thankful that an alpha scorer like Kevin Durant, who only finished with 23 points, mm -hmm. but it was how he got those points and when he got them were so critical. If, if he was not on this team, I think we might be, might be talking about a different result overall because his presence in that second quarter was huge to, uh, to stem the tide. Yeah, you, may, you make a great point there. And Durant was, Durant was keeping the team afloat, even though they were down double digits, making so many difficult shots before they can get on track. The Americans started this game 0 of 10 from three-point range. They wound up finding the range and also the defense on Patty Mills. How important was that for Team USA? Very critical. Patty Mills, he is the straw that stirs the Australian drink. The Boomers have relied on him in international play for a long time. He played well, remember, when, uh, when Australia was able to beat the Americans in Las Vegas uh, last month. Uh, Mills was a huge factor there. So taking him out of his game mm -hmm. was obviously huge. There was an interesting dynamic in this one, given Greg Popovich yeah. having coach Patty Mills with the Spurs. And not, not to mention, he's not he's not he's going to go be a teammate of Kevin Durant. He's not even going to, uh, you know, go back to San Antonio. There's all this interesting subplot there. But taking him out uh, was was obviously a very, very big deal. Um, and Australia, you know, unfortunately for them, uh, just trying to get a medal. They're going to go on and play uh, for a bronze here, but they, they've made the semifinals in five consecutive Olympics, but have uh, lost the previous four in the bronze medal game. We'll see if they can regroup and, and wind up picking some hardware there, but Team USA shutting Mills down was one of the biggest factors in them yeah. kind of regaining momentum in the no, game. No doubt about it. Drew Holiday played a big role with regards to that. You mentioned Australia will go for their first ever medal in men's basketball. But when you look for the Americans at this gold medal matchup, you have options here with regards to France and Slovenia. France, a more balanced team perhaps from top to bottom. Slovenia, of course, has Luka Doncic, who's been off the charts in these Olympic Games. With regards to that matchup, what's the more favorable matchup for the United States? I think it is Slovenia that's the more favorable matchup. That's obviously a country that's not uh, not in this spot ever. Luka is mm -hmm. a top 10 player in the world, and he's done a wonderful job to this point of getting uh, Slovenia this far. France, better defensively for sure. France has has beaten Team USA uh, in, in recently in World Cup play. Yep. Obviously, Rudy Gobert, Evan Fournier. They have played well. So if you're Team USA, yes, there's a revenge factor there. But I think even though Slovenia has the best player, Overall, I don't, I don't think it's deniable that France has the better team. So the more advantageous matchup for Team USA would be Slovenia. And frankly, if we're being honest, I think we want to see 
Luca going against. I think that was just a, a more intriguing, enticing matchup to uh, not just the basketball fan, but the Olympic sports fan that's tuning in for this to see Luka Doncic, who again is a top 10 player in the world right now. Um, I think that could be compelling, but I also think in the heart of hearts, Team USA knows, especially again, 10 players on this Team USA roster have no Olympic experience. I think going against Slovenia would uh, maybe make that road to getting a gold that much easier. And if they can do it, obviously going to try and do it for a uh, for a fifth consecutive Olympics. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense there. You have to wonder if the Americans might want France just from that, as you mentioned, that revenge standpoint. He's Matt Norlander covering the Olympics for HQ. Matt, we appreciate the insight. Thank you. Again, USA on to the gold medal game. And this is... United States men's basketball at the Olympics and their lines along the way and the ultimate results. And you see these games against Spain and Australia had very similar blueprints. The United States down double digits in the opening half in both of those games went on a late run in the case against Spain to get even against Australia. They got within three at the break and then blew the game open in the third quarter to win by double digits. We'll see how it plays out in that gold medal matchup. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.